4.8 miles, 10 minutes, five seconds per mile in the Pegasus 35 Shield in some absolutely wonderful conditions out there today. Uh, although wonderful being a, a relative term, a subjective term, I love it. These are my favorite running conditions. We had a ton of snow already on the ground. We had a ton of snow falling as I was running. Uh, and we did have some high winds, which are not my favorite, but overall just absolutely love running in wintry conditions. Uh, the Pegasus 35 Shield has been a shoe that has been disappointing me all year long and uh, that's probably because I think we've had a really mild winter thus far here in Chicago and this shoe is just for whatever reason rides very differently than the non-shield version which hasn't been true in the past couple of years that I've been running in the shield. Uh, this one when it's just cold but dry or cold and even wet it just isn't my favorite shoe. It's uh, really stiff of a shoe. I don't feel the zoom pocket in there. It seems like there's something wrong with the cushion in it. It's just extra firm. It just doesn't feel like a great shoe to run in. But today, running through the snow, this was the best shoe that I think that I could have picked. I don't know if you could pick it up on the camera here, but we had huge snow banks uh, and snow drifts that were mixing with the sand on the beach. And so there's a lot of sand still on the shoe as the snow and all the other water and everything melted away. I'm not sure if it's salt or if it's sand, uh, but definitely these shoes were covered so some of the snow drifts were up to uh, the bottom of my kneecaps that's how crazy things were uh, so um, definitely putting this shoe through a torture test today as well as this stride flip pod uh, so I mentioned that I had 4.8 miles and 10 minutes and 5 seconds per mile pace but this foot pod didn't quite correctly uh, detect what my actual distance were Part of that was some user error for me in using the watch properly. I thought I was resuming an activity after I put the stop to take a uh, kind of some B-roll um, and I didn't resume it properly uh, as I uh, started the run again. That was my fault. I think that was probably about half a mile, three quarters of a mile where I had uh, made that error. But there was definitely another part, but there was definitely another part where I think that the foot pod just stopped working probably because of the cold. And that was another half mile. Uh, when I did map my run for the total distance, I got a total distance of 6.07 miles. So off by about 25%, uh, uh, shorted me about 1.25 miles today, which is a very substantial amount. But then again, this foot pot in terms of where it's placed takes the brunt of uh, all the uh, abuse in terms of the weather that we had today. Uh, like I said, we had a huge snow drift, so I was running in snow. My foot was definitely covered. Uh, usually a lot of steps were covered beyond my ankles. The winds were so high that the waves coming off of Lake Michigan were just absolutely insane. Some of the biggest, craziest, angriest waves that I've ever seen in my years of running on the Chicago Lakefront Trail. And so there was a good portion of the run where I was running not in snow, but in water. And so I think that's where uh, the foot pod just, just got too cold and lost the ability to continue operating uh, from like an electronics and uh, temperature standpoint. Uh, so something to keep in mind for those of you who are planning to use this. I'm not sure that it can keep up uh, in really, really cold conditions, depending on what your foot is going to be getting into. Um, but overall, the Pegasus, though, did a really great job. I didn't notice any of the stiffness that I usually feel, but instead, it finally felt like I was just running in a Pegasus again, even though I was running in just some crazy conditions out there. So underfoot I felt really great uh, at no point even though sometimes I was running in water that was higher than it wasn't quite up to my ankle level the, in terms of the water that I ran in I don't think for the most part it was uh, but it was definitely higher than say for example the the midsole uh, stack height so some of those areas were quite watery uh, very much a surprise and yet my foot stayed warm the entire time. I'm not going to say my foot stayed dry. I definitely had wet socks by the end of my hour uh, of time uh, that I had out there today. Um, but in terms of my toes and my forefoot, uh, while I did feel coldness when I was running through the water and running through the slush, I never felt like any of that cold water was getting in over through the toes. So the material 
that's water repellent on the toes, uh, definitely doing its job and definitely helping me stay warm while I was out there. Um, the winds were just so incredibly intense today. I was wishing that I had ski goggles on. Uh, a lot of the time I was just running like this with my big mitten trying to block some of the wind from pelting my face because it was just really that uncomfortable. Uh, but overall, really happy with the run, really happy that I'm feeling better from my cold, enough that I could have gone out there today and uh, really happy with the way that the Pegasus 35 Shield have worked out. Uh, I think it's a little bit unfortunate that the only time I really seem to like this shoe is when there's snow on the ground. I still think that that means there's something wrong with the shoe itself. But at no point did I feel like these shoes were weighing me down or bogging me down. I didn't feel like I was wearing a weatherized shoe as I was running out in these conditions. And so maybe that is the magic. Maybe that is exactly what this shoe is supposed to do. I just think it's an extremely narrow use case if that really is the case. I just think that it's a happy accident that at least this shoe is great for running in crazy extreme uh, conditions. Not that these are super extreme conditions. I've run in more snow, I've run in colder weather. I know lots of other people run in much colder weather, much higher winds, much more snow. Uh, but I think for you know the average runner, this is pretty intense. Uh, and I would like to say that these shoes did a really good job. So finally, uh, very happy with how these Pegasus are doing. But those are my thoughts. Let me know if you got out uh, in the snow this weekend. I know most of the country was affected by snow in some way. Uh, let me know if you got out there. Uh, love to hear what the conditions were like for your weekend long run. Uh, before I go today, I want to talk about a charity runner for the day. And today's is very timely. It's brought to us by Taco Chef on Twitter. Uh, he gave me the fundraising information for a friend, Monica Kaufman, who is our charity runner for the day. She's going to be running the Zion National Park's half marathon in Zion National Park uh, in just a month, assuming the government isn't still shut down. Uh, but she's going to be running that half marathon in that beautiful place. Uh, to raise money for the National Parks Foundation, which is the charity organization that is dedicated to making sure that we can preserve our national parks for future generations. So I've donated $10 to that cause, and I'll post a link in the description to her fundraising information in case you'd like to help support our national parks in this government shutdown. If you are a charity runner or if you know of a charity runner, please send that fundraising information my way. I'm running really low on fundraisers uh, to spotlight. And so I'd like to make sure that I can keep doing this every day. So send me those links if you have them. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to give uh, $10 to those people and also spotlight them at the end of a video. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?